The transmission. In a vehicle, the transmission has the task of transmitting movement to the wheels, the drive function, by offering the possibility of making and breaking the connection between the engine and wheels by means of a friction clutch, varying the speed ratio between the engine and the wheels by means of the gearbox, and consequently also the torque transmitted. In fact, the torque increases in the same ratio as the speed decreases via the transmission and vice versa. Apart from the drive function, in the case of the tractor, the transmission must also carry out an operating function to activate the external implements. Therefore, one or more power takeoff points are provided at the front and back. The tractor's drive function. The primary function of the tractor, as its name states, is that of towing implements for working the ground or trailers for transporting the harvest. The tractive efforts involved are extremely high, therefore the transmission must be capable of transmitting very high drive torques to the wheels, besides having to have available a large number of transmission ratios so as to be able best to adapt the speed of forward movement and the engine output to the various farming jobs to be carried out, such as, for example, deep and surface ploughing, hoeing, harrowing, haymaking, harvesting, and speedy transporting. The demands dictated by the tractor's drive function find their response in the design of each of the units forming the transmission, which are the clutch, speed gearbox and the step-down gearing, the bevel gear and the differential, the final reduction gear, the brakes. The clutch. The friction clutch permits the gradual making and breaking of the connection between the engine and the gearbox so as to permit starting off, stopping and changing speed during movement without overworking the engine. Activating the clutch may be mechanical by means of rods and levers, the method adopted on our low-powered tractors, or hydrostatic, where the pressure necessary for clamping the friction clutch against the flywheel is exerted by pressurized oil, that is, by hydrostatic action, the method adopted on our medium and high-powered tractors. This latter solution is preferable because it allows for gradual engagement and does not require periodic adjustments since there is automatic recovery of any play. The materials used are of great importance because they must be characterized by a high friction coefficient, as constant as possible at temperature, a high thermal conductivity for ease of heat discharge, optimum resistance to wear and to overheating caused by the necessary sliding on gradual engagement and disengagement. The materials used are of organic or sintered types. The organic materials are asbestos, based with brass fiber inserts to facilitate the transmission and discharge of heat. On our tractors of more than 110 horsepower, we use instead sintered ceramic materials, metal ceramics, formed from a mixture of bronze and ceramic powders, which provides, in comparison to the organic materials, improved heat discharging capacity. They will, furthermore, withstand much greater pressures and are able to maintain a constant friction coefficient up to a temperature of 300 degrees centigrade. The sintered ceramic materials represent the best which can be used today on high power tractors. The greater pressures which can be exerted permit the transmission of high drive torques whilst using clutch plates of compact size and the reduction of the clutch surface by adopting the solution of much lighter, small plates which due to their greater torsional flexibility, do not need springs fitted to the plate. Suitable sizing. For each power category, every 10 to 15 horsepower, we have adopted a specific diameter of clutch plate, thus guaranteeing that they have the most suitable dimensions according to the heaviest usage of that power category. Perfect balance. All the clutch units are subjected to dynamic balancing, thus achieving the absence of vibrations at all speeds.
the gearbox. The gearbox has the task of matching the drive torque to the load moment encountered by the wheels, the speed of the tractor to the working requirements. In addition, the torque produced by the engine has a much lower value than that required at the wheels to provide sufficient tractive effort, and moreover, it is obtained at rotational speeds which are too high. The gearbox constitutes the first stage at which speed can be reduced and the drive torque increased, which can then be increased still further by means of the subsequent reduction gears at the bevel gear and the final step-down gears. The gearbox on our tractors fully meets the demands of the farmer who asks to be able to carry out all the work envisaged on the farm, from the heavy ground preparation work to light finishing and transporting. To have available a range of speed so as to be able to guarantee the maximum productivity for each type of use, to be able to select the gear speed easily and quickly, to be able to rely on perfect efficiency and a long service life. Let us now examine the main characteristics of the gearbox on our tractors. Robust gearbox. The gearbox has helical toothing, which allows for the effort to be spread over several teeth simultaneously. Greater resistance to loads. The meshing is more gradual and progressive. Quietness. Slippage between teeth is more restricted. Greater transmission efficiency due to the low power dissipation. Use of case-hardened, tempered steels. All the elements in the gearbox and the whole of the transmission are made from case-hardened, tempered steels. Case-hardening consists of altering the chemical composition of the half-millimeter surface layer of the part by making it absorb carbon or a blend of carbon and nitrogen. Case-hardening is done by heating the part up to 850, 950 degrees centigrade in furnaces containing the carburizing agent, carbon monoxide, in solid, gaseous or liquid form, salt baths, and then cooling it down slowly. The subsequent thermal tempering process, by heating up to 750, 950 degrees centigrade, maintaining it for a time so that the temperature reaches the desired layers, then sudden cooling in salt water or oil and water, being faced with two different materials, brings different characteristics to the core and to the surface. Thus parts are obtained which are extremely hard on the surface, hence resistant to wear, and at the same time have a tough core which is resistant to knocks. The gearbox is lubricated and cooled by oil. In the medium range models from 80 and 90 horsepower and in those of the high range from 130 horsepower upwards, the gearbox lubrication circuit is also provided with an oil cooler, giving a gearbox free from wear and free from overheating. The physical chemical characteristics of the oil are maintained for optimal lubrication. The lubrication, being under pressure, is extremely efficient and reliable. Because of the pressurized lubrication, it has been possible to further reduce the number of parts by eliminating the bushings between the shaft and the gearing, since the presence of the necessary film of oil is ensured by the grooving in the shafts themselves. Super compact gearbox on the medium range. The gearbox is completely pre-assembled on the bench and fixed to the casing by means of the same flange which holds it together. To remove the whole gearbox from its housing in the tractor does not require tedious dismantling of the major part of the transmission. It is sufficient to separate the front case from the back and unscrew the whole gearbox from its housing. Reduction in servicing costs and time. The gearbox has been made with only three very short shafts which are thus subjected to very much reduced flexural stresses greater mechanical efficiency of the transmission, less wear of the gearing. Each engagement between the toothed wheels causes some energy dissipation via the frictions which are produced. The architecture of this gearbox has permitted the number of gears to be reduced, thus improving efficiency. Synchronized gearbox. All the four or five gear speeds of the gearbox are synchronized. Possibility of rapid easy speed changes during operation optimum handling of the tractor, greater comfort, inverter. In order to have a high number of reverse speeds, the gearbox on our tractor is provided with an inverter, thanks to which all the speeds in forward running 
can also be obtained in reverse. This means that empty return journeys can be made extremely quickly. On the models of the medium range, the inverter is also synchronized, which means that it can be engaged to pass from forward to reverse operation or vice versa whilst the tractor is moving. Ease of management, very maneuverable. The medium range models can reach in reverse operation speeds which are even 10% higher than the corresponding speeds in forward running. This makes empty return trips even quicker. Greater productivity. Super reduction gear. This is indispensable for the special work at the PTO, which requires very low speeds, from 0.30 to 1.5 kilometers per hour, with a high engine output, trench cutting, pipe laying, transplanting, harvesting, dressing. Synchronized mini reduction gear, medium and high ranges. By inserting a mini step down ratio between two consecutive speeds, the number of gear speeds can be doubled by reducing their intervals. Possibility of fully exploiting the tractor by being able to proportion in a precise manner the combination of output speed, torque. Mini reduction available during actual running, thanks to synchronization. Abundance of speed. The gearboxes on our tractors offer an adequate number of standard gear speeds, 3, 4 or 5 depending on the model, and a numerous range from fast, normal, mini reduced, reduced and super reduced. The gear speeds are distributed in such a way as to permit the best exploitation of the drive torque according to the type of work being carried out. Let us try and analyse the gearbox with 24 forward speeds and 12 reverse speeds with mini reduction gear and inverter as used on the medium and high range tractors. Four gear speeds are available for three speed ranges slow, normal, fast. In the case of the medium powered tractors the slow range offers four speeds from 0.7 to 3 kilometers per hour. The normal range four speeds from 2.2 to 9.7 kilometers per hour and the fast range four speeds from 6.6 .6 to 30 kilometers per hour which can be reached either in forward or reverse operation. The start off capabilities and speed in first gear allow us to pull away a heavy load such as a fully laden trailer. Finally by means of the synchronized mini reduction gear there is a mini reduced ratio of about 15% between two consecutive speeds in forward operation, thus making 24 gear speeds available. The distribution of the speeds is such as to concentrate the greatest number of gear speeds between 2 and 10 kilometers per hour, which is within the range of speeds most used and within which a great number of different jobs can be carried out. In our 24 speed gearboxes, Indeed, 12 or even 14, according to the model, are concentrated between 2 and 10 kilometers per hour. Why is it important to have such a close ratio gearbox? Well, consider, for example, the need to work at a speed of 5 kilometers per hour. When the work is demanding maximum power, such as in heavy plowing, then the gear used will be second normal, with the engine running at full RPM. For work requiring less power, instead of using second gear, we can obtain the same speed in third gear normal, with mini reduction engaged and the engine RPM reduced by 12%, giving a slight power reduction of 5%. Alternatively, using third normal at 1,900 RPM, we can still maintain the same speed, this time with a power loss no greater than 15%. Finally, for very light work, it is possible to throttle the engine down to 1,550 RPM and use fourth normal mini reduction, still achieving the same forward speed. 40 km per hour gearbox. This has been adopted on our tractors in the medium four-wheel drive range and is particularly useful in cases where the tractor is used frequently for road transport and removals since it allows a saving of 30% on journey times. It comprises 20 forward speeds and 20 reverse speeds with 
five synchronized speeds, four speed ranges, synchronized inverter, super reduction gear, five super reduced speeds of between 250 and 1,400 meters per hour. Operating advantages of transport and removals at 40 kilometers per hour with the Explorer. The speed of 30 kilometers per hour entails mileage times some 33% higher than those required by the Explorer. When using the Explorer, added to the time saving is the still greater saving in fuel. On the graph referred to, it is possible to quantify this fuel saving as compared to a competing tractor which has a defined specific consumption at maximum output speed. Example of the use of the graph. Here is a comparison between the Explorer 60 and a competitor of the same output power but with a maximum speed of 30 kilometers per hour. The specific consumption of the competitor is found on the horizontal axis. For example, 180 grams per horsepower per hour. Move up vertically until the graph for the Explorer 60 is reached. Then move from this point horizontally until encountering on the vertical axis the greater percentage consumption of the competitor, plus 53% during removals and transport at maximum speed and power. How is such a significant result achieved? Let us try to calculate the greater percentage consumption of the competitor on a journey of 30 kilometers. It is obvious that the percentage figure which is reached is also valid for shorter journeys. The Explorer covers 30 kilometers in three quarters of an hour, whilst the competitor takes one hour. Therefore, the competitor uses 33% more time, as is shown by the following calculation. One hour minus three quarters of an hour divided by three quarters of an hour equals plus 33%. As the Explorer 60 has a specific consumption at maximum output power of 157 grams per horsepower per hour, according to the DIN standard, in three quarters of an hour, at maximum output power, it will consume 150 grams per horsepower per hour times 60 horsepower times three quarters of an hour equals 7,070 grams of fuel. A competitor with a specific consumption at maximum output of 180 grams per horsepower per hour to cover 30 kilometers takes one hour at maximum output power, thus consuming 180 grams per horsepower per hour times 60 horsepower times one hour equals 10,800 grams of fuel. The greater percentage consumption by the competitor is thus 10,800 grams minus 7,070 grams divided by 7,070 grams equals plus 52.75%. The brakes. The braking system on a tractor must respond to the very severe demands requiring great efficiency in order to give the tractor a high level of operating safety. Despite the traverse speeds being relatively slow, the braking system must be very powerful because the tractor has a very high weight increased generally by the very heavy implements mounted or being towed. Furthermore, the tractor also operates on very hilly ground. The brakes have to be used frequently and with certainty, without encountering any problems with overheating, which may compromise their integrity. So that the brakes have a long service life, great care is paid to their manufacture and the materials used in order to restrict wear to the minimum. Protection from dust and mud must be very effective, otherwise the life of the brakes would be very short. The braking system must contribute to the maneuverability of the tractor via the differential braking on the wheels on a single side so as to reduce the turning radius. Precisely because the service life and efficiency are essential, the brakes are located upline from the final reduction gear. 
By braking on the high speed shafts, this exerts a reduced braking moment. In fact, like the bevel gear to the wheels, the drive torque increases via the final reduction gear, so that inversely, the moment which the wheels oppose to the braking action is scaled down by the final reduction gear. Oil-cooled disc brakes. The disc brakes on all our models have friction linings made of graphite-based sintered material, which has proved to be the most suitable for simultaneously satisfying the requirements of high friction coefficient, high temperature resistance, resistance to dirt, service life, quietness. The friction service of the brakes has suitable grooving to allow passage of the oil in which they are immersed, thus ensuring efficient cooling of the discs. Reliable, safe brakes for the most demanding uses. Brakes free from overheating and wear. Brakes protected from dust and mud. The main requirements of the braking system are safe braking action, high reliability, long service life. We have therefore adopted, for all our rubber tired tractors, oil-cooled disc brakes, which represent the most suitable technological solution for meeting the stringent requirements of a braking system. Hydrostatic control, medium and high range. The actuation of the rods and levers is done by a pressurized oil circuit. Powerful, safe braking action. Minimum effort on the part of the driver. No need for periodic adjustments, since play is automatically taken up. Parking brake. In accordance with EEC standards, on our low range models, the parking brake acts on the service brakes by means of a separate independent control. For greater safety and to comply with the most rigorous standards, those applicable in Germany, on our medium and high range models, the parking brake is completely independent from the service brakes. In fact, it brakes on the transmission shaft to the wheels by means of oil-cooled discs. Greater safety, as it can also be used as an emergency brake. Greater braking power, because it can be used in addition to the service brakes when serious emergency conditions make it necessary. Oil-cooled disc brakes on the front wheels for the four-wheel drive version. The four-wheel drive tractors in the medium and high ranges are fitted with hydrostatic oil-cooled disc brakes on the front and rear wheels. Of importance is the benefit to handling ability. Via the differential braking system, turning radii of only 2.95 meters with medium range tractors and of about 3.5 meters with the high range tractors. The most important benefit is that associated with safety. In fact, integral braking on all four wheels, by also exploiting the ground holding of the front wheels, enables a braking power, even with dual drive disconnected, to be exerted, depending on the model, which is 25.4% higher than that which can be obtained with brakes fitted only to the rear wheels. The power takeoff, PTO. Up to about 25 years ago, the main purpose of the tractor was to provide the necessary traction for towing trailers or implements such as plows or fixed prong harrows. The use of mechanical power to operate external implements was very limited and was done principally by means of a pulley, which by means of long belts kept stationary machinery such as threshers moving. Nowadays, on the other hand, for each job on the land, there is at least one specific implement which needs not only to be towed, but also power to be transmitted to its moving parts. The tractor is therefore also required to provide mechanical power via one or more power takeoff points. The trend is now towards giving tractors a front power takeoff too, so as to be able to use two implements simultaneously, one at the front and one at the back. The types of power takeoff, PTO, generally used nowadays are 
PTO synchronized with the engine, PTO synchronized with the tractor's rear wheels. The power takeoff on Same tractors. We have created power takeoffs with such solutions that turn our tractors into true mobile power units, thus guaranteeing full utilization of engine power via the high efficiency of the transmission, high productivity from the most convenient ratios between engine output and power takeoff speed, great versatility of use, easy control of the PTO clutch, a reliable and efficient friction clutch, easy coupling of implements. Helical toothed gearing, medium range. The gearing which transmits the movement to the output socket of the PTO has helical toothing, which enables the effort to be distributed over several teeth simultaneously. Greater resistance to loads. Engagement is more gradual and progressive, quieter. Slippage between the teeth is more restricted. Greater transmission efficiency due to less power dissipation. High productivity. The standardized speeds of 540 and 1000 RPM are obtained at engine speeds which allow for constant availability of a substantial reserve torque, maximum exploitation of engine power. In fact, the 1000 RPM are obtained at 95 to 99 percent of output depending on the model, so as to have available the very high power outputs necessary for the heaviest work. On the other hand, the 540 RPM used for tasks requiring medium low power are achieved with lower engine outputs, 85 to 92 percent, at which there is adequate power availability plus the possibility of working for prolonged periods without interruption and a sufficient torque reserve in the event of some overload causing the RPM to drop. Independent control of the 540-1000 PTO clutch. On all our models from the 45 horsepower upwards, the PTO clutch control, whether mechanical or hydraulically servo controlled, is by means of a hand lever. It is therefore completely independent of the gearbox clutch control. The PTO is therefore engaged without interfering with the remainder of the transmission irrespective of whether the tractor is at a standstill or moving. Oil-cooled, multi-plate clutch with hydraulic servo control brakes, medium and high ranges. This is the solution which best responds to the working requirements of the medium and high ranges. The PTO clutch is completely independent of the engine gearbox clutch. The control lever activates a hydraulic distributor, thus permitting the pressurized oil to act on the piston which clamps the drive plates against the slave plates, thus transmitting the movement to the output shaft. The plates, made of graphite or bronze-based sintered materials, are immersed in oil. Absence of wear and overheating. Ease of operation with no effort on the part of the driver. No slippage under load. No need for periodic adjustment. A second piston, also hydraulically controlled via the distributor, acts on a brake which locks the disc pack when the clutch is disengaged so as to prevent rotation of the PTO output shaft. Operator safety when connecting up the shaft. A relief valve prevents damage to the hydraulic circuit in the event of excess oil pressure. Speed selector provided with neutral position. The models fitted with 540 and 1000 RPM PTOs have a speed selector lever provided with a neutral position. This lever acts on a speed selector with sliding gearing on the low range tractors and with a sliding sleeve on the medium and high ranges. Rapid selection easy coupling of implements due to the neutral position, operator safety. 
Power takeoff synchronized with the wheels with an independent output shaft, medium range. The PTO synchronized with the wheels is commonly used with trailers with a drawing axle, such as for operating precision sewing equipment and transplanters. In the case of trailers with a drawn axle, for the purposes of ground holding, use is made not only of the weight of the tractor, but also of that of the trailer and of its load. The trailer, which generally represents a passive unit, now receives, via the synchronized PTO, the drive force to transmit tractive effort to its own wheels. Thus, the trailer becomes an active element. In the case of a four-wheel drive tractor, and a trailer on which two wheels are thus powered, this gives a train of six drive wheels. This solution is frequently the only one practical for transport on hills and in mountainous areas. On our tractors in the medium range, we have adopted an original solution with two separate output shafts, one for the 541,000 PTO and the other synchronized with the wheels. This solution allows for the simultaneous and independent use of the two PTOs to operate two different implements or for implements on the drawn axle which require simultaneous operation of their particular units, such as pumps on liquid slurry spreaders, crop pickup on self-loading wagons, manure spreaders, conveyor bed on manure spreaders. The simultaneous use of the two PTOs is the only way of carrying out certain farming tasks or dressings on hillsides without having recourse to a power generator, e.g. auxiliary engine mounted on the equipment. The four-wheel drive. Why the four-wheel drive? The adoption of the four-wheel drive gives the tractor better wheel grip. In fact, the whole weight of the tractor is used to generate the tractive effort, and not only the weight on the two rear wheels, as in the case of two-wheel drive versions. Two important results are achieved thereby. An increase in productivity. It is possible, for example, to plough with less slipping, hence at a higher speed. The possibility of carrying out work which cannot be done with a two-wheel drive tractor, working on steep slopes or muddy ground. It is not, therefore, just a case of higher productivity, but also being able or unable to carry out certain tasks in specific conditions. The possibility of having traction also available on the front axle brings other important advantages with it. Easy surmounting of obstacles, since the front wheels, which are the first to encounter them, already possess the necessary drive torque to surmount them the possibility of being able to extricate oneself from critical conditions when the wheels of one axle sink into muddy ground whilst those of the other axle can get a grip on solid ground. Better steering, thanks to the front traction, by avoiding skidding on muddy, soft or uneven ground. Typology of four-wheel drive tractors. The typology of four-wheel drive tractors is represented by two basic solutions tractors with equal sized wheels. The weight of the tractor and of the implements carried is distributed more or less equally over the two axles fitted with wheels of equal size. In order to be able to steer in fairly restricted spaces, having large diameter front wheels means having to resort to an articulated structure equipped with central pivot steering. This solution, besides being mechanically complicated for the purpose of ensuring the tractor has sufficient mechanical strength, is also expensive and is still only used on some tractors of more than 170 horsepower and on mini tractors with an output of less than 50 horsepower. The design with equal sized wheels and central pivot is nowadays giving way to the design with a rigid frame. Tractors with rigid structure and front wheel drive. The front wheels have a smaller diameter than the two rear wheels and the weight distribution between the front and rear axles is respectively 35-40% and 60-65%. Mechanical strength being equal, this solution is both less expensive and characterized by greater maneuverability 
which in recent years has been markedly improved, making it possible to use the rigid structure for all power categories. In fact, the correct design of rigid bodied tractors permits for better ground holding and without any loss to maneuverability, the use of large sized front wheels, which constitute the main characteristic of articulated tractors with equal sized wheels. Finally, one should not underrate the fact that the rigid structure permits the production of the same tractor also in a two-wheel drive version with a great commonality of mechanical parts with the four-wheel drive tractor. The four-wheel drive. These represent a feather in the cap of Same tradition. In fact, the agricultural requirement of a front driving axle was foreseen by the founder of Same, engineer Francesco Cassani, in 1928 and was then tackled in a radical manner by Same, who have led the world in the development of the concept of integral traction for the modern tractor. All Same tractors are designed with four-wheel drive. The dual traction on our tractors is not an emergency solution for difficult terrain or an addition to the two-wheel drive tractor. On the contrary, right from conception, the tractor is designed to be a four-wheel drive. That is why the front structure of our tractors is made with the necessary robustness for withstanding the tractive stresses without having to resort to strengthening members, which transmit some of the efforts but restrict the steering angle of the wheels. Our engines are all self-supporting. With the weight distribution on the axles, which guarantees maximum ground holding and stability without having to resort to fixed ballast or to unnecessarily expensive weighting of the front axle housing. Power takeoff direct from the gearbox, located centrally and already provided for at the design stage. Correct power distribution between the transmission units to the front and rear axles mechanical, on-the-go engagement. The front traction can be engaged whilst running. Possibility of engagement at any instant for maximum efficiency and safety in critical conditions. No loss of time for its engagement. Central direct transmission shaft without any universal joints. The absence of universal joints guarantees a high transmission efficiency. Total transmission of power. The transmission shaft, centrally located, is conveniently protected by a casing over its whole length. Protection against stones or the wrapping of straw or hay. Central differential. The differential is located in a central position and is of very compact size very good ground clearance, allows the axle a wide angle of movement, constant velocity universal joints protected within the wheel hubs. The dual universal joints, constant velocity joints, permit transmission of the motion from the half shafts to the wheels in such a way that the latter do not vary the speed of rotation in relation to the half shafts, even in tight steering phases, regular rotation of the wheels, Uniform transmission of power to the wheels, even in the tightest turns, absence of irritating jumping of the front wheels. The joints are protected from mud, straw, stones, etc., by the special moulded configuration of the wheel hubs and the outer ends of the front axle. Long service life, no maintenance. Epicyclic final reduction gear. The load is spread over three sets of gears greater load resistance. Having an equal reduction ratio, their overall size is more compact compared to cascade step-down gears. Hence, they are lodged in the hubs and do not project out from the wheels. The maximum overall dimension is that of the wheel rim. No risk of inadvertent knocking against obstacles. The final reduction gears have a high reduction ratio. In this way, the transmission shafts the bevel gear, the differential and the half shafts can rotate at high speed. Consequently, they transmit a more reduced drive torque. Overloads 
and risks of breakages are avoided. Cast iron monoblock front axle. Maximum robustness. Front mounted implements can be attached. Permits high loads to be reached on the front axle. Wide angle of oscillation of axle. Adaptability to every type of land. Large section and diameter front wheels. The broad section tires allow weight to be distributed over a wider contact surface, thus exerting less pressure on the ground, less compacting of the soil, and generating better ground holding, less slipping, greater tractive efforts, less tire wear. The large diameter of the tires gives the tractor a greater ground clearance comparable to that of the two-wheel drive versions of equal power. Innovations in the dual traction of the new medium and high ranges. 50 degree steering. This important technological result is one of the fruits of the original design of the entire tractor, in which each basic unit achieves optimum integration with the rest of the tractor. Extremely low minimum turning radii. High maneuverability. Less time wasted. The achievement of such a high steering angle is still more significant when one considers that it is obtained with large size front wheels. In the design of the new engines, all dimensions have been reduced which could have interfered with the wheels during the turning phase. All projecting accessories, such as oil and fuel filters, have been located according to the above criterion, and the control rods of the rocker arms have been arranged in a direction such that the engine has been slimmed down at the bottom without, however, losing any of its self-supporting function. Locking of the front differential. It can be engaged simultaneously with the rear one in order to take rapid action in the event of one wheel starting to spin in relation to another due to an unexpected loss of grip. Safety and productivity, even on muddy ground, less tire wear, less ground compaction, no fuel wasted by unnecessary wheel spin. Oil-cooled disc brakes on the front wheels. The integral braking on all four wheels is a guarantee of maximum safety on hills and during high-speed road transport with heavy trailers. The maximum speed of 40 kilometers per hour, another of the significant points of the Same four-wheel drive tractors, has been approved too, thanks to the presence of oil-cooled disc brakes on the front wheels also. Maneuverability, furthermore, is enormously improved due to the differential braking of both the right-hand and left-hand wheels, via which turning radii can be achieved which are more typical of two-wheel drive tractors. Let us look at some of the figures. Even without the use of the differential braking, because of the 50 degree steering angle, we are in a position to provide record turning radii. Explorer 60, 3.90 meters. Explorer 70, 4.25 meters. Explorer 80 and 90, 4.95 meters. Laser, 5.50 meters. Galaxy, 5.65 meters. By using the differential braking system, these figures can be drastically reduced. Explorer 60, 2.78 meters. Explorer 70, 2.80 meters. Explorer 80 and 90, 2.94 meters. Laser, depending on the model, from 3.3 to 3.6 meters. Galaxy, 3.67 meters. The two-wheel drive tractors. 
The two-wheel drive tractors, because of their lower cost, are those most suitable for all jobs which do not require demanding tractive forces, such as work on light level ground, reworking, haymaking, harvesting, static working at the power takeoff, small farm jobs, feeding stuffs distribution. For the types of work which they are called on to carry out, the main characteristics required of the two-wheel drive tractors are great ease of handling, great versatility of use, great maneuverability. Given their vast field of use and their widespread presence, we have paid great care to producing two-wheel drive tractors which are robust, maneuverable and versatile. Robustness. The great robustness demanded of four-wheel drive tractors whose structure must withstand the tractive stresses transmitted by the front driven axle are also found, in the case of our tractors, on the two-wheel drive versions. In fact, all our tractors are designed as four-wheel drive tractors. Of these, some are converted into two-wheel drive tractors simply by replacing the heavy-duty driven front axle with a robust telescopic axle. High ground clearance and adjustable tracking. Maximum adaptability to work between rows without damaging the plants. 72 degree steering. All our models in the medium and high ranges have a 72 degree steering angle. This gives greater productivity as rapid maneuvering is possible in very restricted spaces due to the minimum turning radii without braking being exceptionally small. Explorer 60, 3.16 meters. Explorer 70, 3.50 meters. Explorer 80 and 90, 3.55 meters. Laser 90 and 100, 3.70 meters. Laser 110, 3.80 meters. By using the differential braking system, these figures can be drastically reduced to the exceptional values of 2 meters and 80, 90 centimeters on the medium range tractors, 3 meters and 30, 40 centimeters on those of the high range. The automatic control unit. The first tractors were restricted to towing implements by means of hooks. In order to give rise to the necessary tractive force, which requires strong grip, in those days one had to resort to a very heavy weight of the tractor in relation to the effort to be exerted. A great step forward in the evolution of the tractor occurred when the hydraulic lift was introduced, connected to a hitch system, three-point hitch, which allows the tractor to carry directly the different agricultural implements. Consequent on the introduction of the three-point hitch, it was thus possible to construct much lighter tractors in relation to the tractive effort required of them. The heavy weight essential for ground holding is provided by the weight of the implement carried, the weight of the earth on the implement, the dynamic transfer of the resistance to forward movement of the implement. Subsequent improvements have enhanced the functions of the lift until it has been transformed into a real automatic control unit. The original automatic control unit, ACU, which has always been one of the strong points of our product, makes the tractor an intelligent operating unit, capable of carrying out automatically, depending on the working conditions, those operations and controls which in the past were the exclusive province of the driver. In particular, the ACU carries out the following functions. Adjusts the position of the implement, automatically controls the draft, combined control of position and draft, adjusts the speed of drop of the implement, rapid lowering of the implement, floating position of the implement, hydraulic control of external implements. Automatic control of the implement. The SAME ACU is capable of performing automatically the following functions on the implement. Position control allows the implement to be carried and maintained in one position, whether in or out of the ground, depending on the position of the relevant control lever, yellow. It is used for leveling blades, 
drills, rotary hose, fertilizer distributors, seed sowing, etc. Draft control. Permits the tractive forces of the tractor to be maintained almost constant and is commonly used with all the mounted implements which have to work the ground at a given depth. Plows, cultivators, scarifiers. The implement is lowered into the ground by means of the control lever, yellow. An automatic device controlled by the green depth adjustment lever acts to maintain the draft demanded of the tractor almost constant by automatically varying, within very restricted limits, the working depth of the implement as the ground resistance varies. For uniformly consistent but undulating ground, the draft control is translated into the possibility of maintaining a constant working depth. On the other hand, if the land is of variable consistency, the control system lets the working depth vary slightly as the resistance of the ground varies, with the aim of maintaining constant the effort required of the tractor. In this case, the depth of work is not absolutely constant, but a notable advantage is obtained in being able to avoid excessive wheel spin and wasted time in gear changing, with the benefit of greater productivity. Combined position and draft control. The combined, mixed, position and draft control is a later development of the draft control system. In fact, with the lift preset for draft control alone, the implement can change its working depth quite considerably or come out of the ground when it enters zones of differing extremes of consistency, stretches of sand or clay. With the introduction of the mixed position and draft control, the variations in depth of the implement are restricted in relation to the mean figure to which it is possible to reduce the sensitivity of the draft control by partially introducing the controlled position. For each job, it is therefore possible to select the optimum combination of position control and draft control so as to work quickly and obtain a good working yield, good quality work. Floating use. The floating position consists of the free oscillation of the lifting arms along the whole of their arc of movement. The floating position is used, therefore, for all implements which have to follow the contours of the ground. Characteristics of the automatic control unit. Sensing the draft on the lower linkage. The control system exploits the principle that for every action, there is a reaction. When an implement is mounted on the lift and is working in the ground, it always transmits a reaction to the draft. If the lift is preset to work under controlled draft, this reaction is duly relieved by suitable devices located on the lift itself, which allow for controlling not only the degree of draft at that instant, but also of automatically acting to ensure that such effort remains within the predetermined figures. Draft sensing can occur at the third point by changing the anchorage point on the strut at the lower link where the draft is more intense and it is therefore easier to assess even the smallest variations. Same has adopted the latter solution for those models which require great sensitivity and rapidity of control of the implements. However, differing from other systems used by the competition, flexural or torsional bars, Same's patented system provides a direct connection by means of a single lever between the sensing device of the ACU and the top arms, making it much more simple and reliable, and above all, capable of instantly sensing the variations in effort. Its quality of operation remains unchanged by time because of the fact that the draft sensing system does not cause torsional deformations to the lower link cross shaft. Great sensitivity in assessing even the slightest load variations. High speed intervention at the working position, prevention of excessive wheel spin, greater versatility of use. The draft control via the lower links allows draft control even with semi-mounted implements. 
The connecting lever, being on the outside, is in a clearly visible position and enables the operator to easily check the correct operation. Control of the implement's speed of rise and descent. The circuit is equipped with a hydraulic shock absorber, which maintains constant the speed of drop of the implement irrespective of its weight. The risk of violent impact with the ground is avoided. This device, by modulating the hydraulic flow rate, ensures that starting and stopping, the lifting or rapid lowering of the implement, is done progressively and thus avoids any sudden starts or stops. Elimination of jerks in starting or stopping. Less stress, greater comfort. Anti-shock valve. An anti-shock valve located in the oil return circuit of the lifting cylinder means that any unexpected pressure peaks, due for example to jolting during high-speed transport with implements mounted, is vented thus avoiding any damaging repercussions on components in the hydraulic circuit. The position control instantaneously returns the implement to the original height. Load sensing valve, medium and high ranges. An original pressure modulating system, which incorporates a load sensing valve, means that the hydraulic flow in excess of the requirements of use is discharged, not at the circuit's maximum calibrated pressure, but at the working pressure, generally much lower, thus reducing the power necessary to make the hydraulic circuit function. Less power absorbed equals greater operating economy. Open center hydraulic circuit. This type of circuit has allowed the use of large capacity pumps, up to 64 liters per minute, without having to excessively increase overall size. Quick action in correcting the position of the implement. Time saving, quicker action. Even when the lift is not working, the oil is completely circulating at very low pressure and therefore absorbs very little power. When the lift is operated, the pressure rises instantly to the level demanded by the load condition. Thanks to this system, the hydraulic lift demands of the engine only the amount of power it needs at the instant it needs it. Hydraulic power generator. Our tractor constitutes a true hydraulic power generator. The hydraulic circuit of the hydraulic lift has been designed also for this purpose. The capacity of the pump on the circuit, up to 64 liters per minute, is capable of fully meeting the needs of all the farming implements commonly used. The two, three, four, six, and eight-way hydraulic distributors with integral relief valves allow double or single action external rams to be operated. Quick fitting connectors are available on request for remote control hydraulic piping. The three-point hitch fitted with telescopic stabilizers, threaded lift rods, adjustable top link, third point. Easy correct coupling of implements. An automatic three-point hitch is also available for models in the medium and high ranges. Possibility of coupling up the implements from the driving position. Saving in time. Performance. The ISO standards recommend, depending on the output power of the tractor, minimum lifting capacities. Such testing standards require a concentrated load to be cantilevered at 610 millimeters from the hitch ball and the lift activated by limiting the working pressure to 90% of maximum. Even in the standard design, Same's hydraulic power lift demonstrates lifting capacities which are 45%, 60%, 75% and 90% higher than those recommended by the ISO standards. In the configuration with auxiliary jacks, the lifting capacity reaches figures which are additionally 100%, 130% and 160% above the recommended minima.